The rivalry between Israel Adesanya and Drikas Duplessis has sparked an immense amount of controversy in the mixed martial arts world. This video will provide a comprehensive breakdown of both fighters' ethnic background and history. Israel Adesanya is ethnically Yoruba. The Yoruba people are a West African ethnic group. There are around 52 million Yoruba people living today in Africa and around 1 million living outside of Africa. The Yoruba diaspora is comprised of two groups, the first being those who were sold as slaves from the 16th to 19th centuries, and the second being those who have immigrated post-decolonization from the 1960s onward. The majority of Yoruba people speak the Yoruba language, which is thought to be in the Niger-Congo language family. The Yoruba people likely developed in place out of earlier Mesolithic Volta Niger populations. Their own oral history suggests that they are the successors of the Ife Empire, which existed from about the 8th century AD till the 11th century AD before the rise of the actual Oyo Empire, who are definitively Yoruba speakers. It is suggested that the Yoruba were the dominant cultural force in southern and northwestern Nigeria as far back as the 11th century. The Yoruba have traditionally been among the most urbanized people in Africa. For centuries before the arrival of the British colonial administration, most Yoruba already lived in well-structured urban centers organized around powerful city-states. In ancient times, most of these cities were fortresses, suggesting endemic warfare. The Oyo Empire was active in the African slave trade during the 1700s. The Yoruba often demanded slaves as a form of tribute of subject populations, who in turn sometimes made war on other people to capture the required slaves. Part of the slaves sold by the Oyo Empire entered the Atlantic slave trade, others entered the Trans-Saharan slave trade, and others were kept for personal use. The Yoruba often describe their own settlements as being among three generations. The first generation includes towns and cities known as the original capitals of founding Yoruba kingdoms and states. The second generation consists of settlements created by conquest. The third generation consists of villages and municipalities that emerged following civil wars in the 1800s. The pre-colonial organization of the Yoruba is monarchic and aristocratic. In fact, the Yoruba believed in the divine king. The Yoruba people contributed significant cultural and economic influence upon the Atlantic slave trade during its run from approximately 1400 until 1900 AD. It is worth noting that this predated the colonial period in Nigeria. The British colonial period in Nigeria began in 1901, several decades after Britain had outlawed the practice of slavery. Let's briefly go over the history of the Yoruba people and slavery. From 1400 onward, the Oyo Empire's imperial success made the Yoruba language a lingua franca along the coast. Toward the end of the 18th century, the Oyo army was neglected as there was less need to conquer. Instead, Oyo directed more effort towards trading and acting as middlemen for both the trans-Saharan and transatlantic slave trades. The Oyo Empire's captives and criminals were sold to Dutch and Portuguese buyers. It is obviously hard to prove if Israel Adesanya's ancestors themselves owned slaves, but they undoubtedly lived in a society where slavery was commonplace. So to quickly wrap up Izzy's background, he is ethnically Yoruba and undoubtedly an African person. To say otherwise is ignorant. Just because he has lived for 20 plus years in New Zealand does not make him not African. His genes are quite literally from the continent. However, it is equally ignorant to say that an ethnic group that has developed over nearly 500 years on that same continent is not African. Drikas Duplessis is an Afrikaner, Boer, or white South African. Let's quickly dive in and break down his background. There is a little bit of confusion surrounding Drikas Duplessis' ethnic background. Duplessis itself is a French Huguenot last name. Some people assume that Drikas is French. Yes, his surname is from France, but it is unlikely that Drikas has significant amounts of French DNA. To briefly go over the Huguenots, they were a Protestant sect within France in the 1600s that faced extreme persecution from the Catholic majority. By 1685, Protestantism was criminalized in France, forcing thousands of Huguenots to flee the country. They went to various countries, from Brazil to the Dutch West Indies, the Dutch East Indies, the English colonies in the United States, Prussia, Sweden, etc. And about 180 families settled in the Dutch Cape Colony in what would become 
South Africa. The majority of Huguenots settled in the Cape Colony between 1688 and 1689. The Huguenots in South Africa were absorbed into the native Dutch population rather seamlessly due to religious and cultural similarities. So, there is no distinct French South African cultural group that exists today. Dricus du Plessis, while having a French patronym, is a Afrikaner. With that being said, let's briefly go over the history of his people to compare it to that of Israel Adesanya. The ancestors of the Afrikaners arrived on the Cape of Good Hope in modern-day South Africa in 1652. Today, they make up approximately 5.2% of South Africa's population. There is an estimated 2.8 to 3.5 million of them. In 1602, the Dutch Republic founded the Dutch East India Company, known as the VOC. This company noticed the natural value of the Cape of Good Hope and created a colony there to facilitate trade. Immigration to the colony increased from 1685 to 1707. Including the Dutch and French, German soldiers hired by the VOC also settled in the colony in this period. But despite their diverse backgrounds, the colonists used a common language and adopted similar attitudes towards politics. This created the basis for the modern Afrikaner identity. By the late 1700s, the idea of being rooted in Africa as opposed to being expatriates emerged. By the time British rule in South Africa became permanent in 1806, the Afrikaners had reached a population of about 26,000. There were two distinct subgroups of Dutch colonists. The Boers, a agricultural people, and the Cape Dutch, a settled people who remained close to Cape Town and the Cape Colony. Boers, due to their mistrust of centralized government and dislike of the Dutch East India Company's regulations, had migrated up to a thousand kilometers into the interior of South Africa by the mid-1700s. At this point, they encountered the Khoisa people, who were migrating south at the same time. Competition between resources and land at this point resulted in the Khoisa Wars. The Dutch East India Company, the VOC, lost control of the Cape Colony in 1794 when the Dutch government assumed direct control over the territory. However, due to events in Europe, the Dutch were unable to defend their overseas territory, and Britain annexed it. The British officially assumed control of the colony in 1815 after the Napoleonic Wars. The relationship between the Dutch colonists and the new British colonizers quickly went south. The British introduced liberal attitudes towards slavery and the treatment of other tribes in the area, which created tensions among the Dutch colonists. The British introduced circuit courts to the interior of South Africa, which could try colonists for the abuses of slaves and indentured servants. In the 1830s and 1840s, an organized migration of an estimated 14,000 Boers, known as the Voortrekkers, began. Voortrekkers departed the Cape Colony in a series of parties, taking with them all their livestock as well as slaves. One of their goals was to sever their ties with the Cape's commercial network by gaining access to foreign traders and ports in East Africa. This track resulted in conflict with the Zulu people. Boers sent a land treaty in 1838 to negotiate with the Zulu king. However, the Zulus surprised and killed members of the delegation. A large-scale massacre of the Boers followed. Zulu regiments attacked Boers encampments, killing women and children along with men. In contrast to this, during earlier conflicts with the Khoisa people, the Boers had reported that they did not kill their women and children. About 470 men arrived to help the new settlers. On December 16, 1838, they confronted about 10,000 Zulus and, with only three injuries, killed 3,000 of them in what would become the Battle of Blood River. Following this victory, the Boers established the Natalia Republic. However, in 1843, the British annexed this region, forcing the Boers to move on further inland. They spread out northwest into the Transvaal and Trans-Orange regions. These areas were largely unpopulated due to genocidal conflicts between the Zulus and the local Basutu population. Boers established a number of republics, the two most prominent of which were the South African Republic and the Orange Free State. But the discovery of gold fields drew British attention yet again, resulting in two wars. The first Boer War, which was a victory for the Boers, and the second Boer War, which resulted in British annexation of the republics. The second Boer War was specifically brutal. The British employed scorched earth tactics and used concentration camps 
strategy resulted in over 27,000 boar deaths, mainly women and children under the age of 16, due to hunger and disease in these camps. The beginning of the 20th century solidified British dominance over South Africa for nearly 50 years, much as it did in Nigeria. This is the height of the British colonial period in Africa. Apartheid, the infamous practice of racial segregation in South Africa, began in 1948 after South African independence. Thus, it should be viewed as a post-colonial construct. And as the purpose here was to discuss the colonial histories of Israel Adesanya and Drikas Duplessis families, it is beyond the scope of this video. To conclude, both Israel Adesanya and Drikas Duplessis are obviously African, both of their ancestors probably owned slaves, and both of their ancestors settled and colonized land that was not historically their own just as every last one of your ancestors has. This is not a reflection on their character as people today, and the color of their skin is irrelevant. They should be judged on how they conduct themselves now. Israel Adesanya is emotional and immature, while Drikus is measured and adult in his behavior. Who would you rather have as the champ of the middleweight division? If you take anything away from this video, it should be to stop blaming each other and blame the British. Dime, Bobby. Dime, mommy.